Hey guys, John Jr. here, I'm bringing you guys another BBR video. I'm doing something a little bit different than last season. Last season, I put both the team builder and the match, if I did a team builder, in the same video, and that led to like hour long videos. This time, I wanna make the content more digestible, so I'm going to split them up. On Saturdays, you guys are going to get the team builder, much like today, and then on Sunday, the actual match. That way, I do not force those that do not want to watch the team builder to sit through the team builder or to have to fast forward through that team builder. That being said, if you are watching this I really appreciate you team building is one of my favorite aspects of Pokemon draft league and if you are just getting into draft league I highly recommend you check out these videos on top of that I don't know how this is going to work yet but I am also going to make the content more digestible in the sense that I am going to try to also make shorts of the matches because let's face it draft league can kind of be a lot to watch all at once and a lot of people have the attention spans of a ferret so because of that I'm going to try to push out shorts on top of the matches that way you can kind of choose how you want to digest my content there will be three different ways to digest it. And I think it's going to be really cool and really unique on this season. First of all, we are going to be playing Mephesto for this week one. And I am going to shout him out a lot in the main battle. But go ahead and check him out in the top right hand corner of your screen right now. Mephesto is an awesome, awesome guy. He is a super nice soul. He has been talking to me basically every day since we scheduled our match. Like a week, a week and a half. And I cannot stress enough. He is a very funny content creator. Please go check him out. And it was his birthday this past Sunday. I think Sunday. It might have been Monday. But wish him a happy belated birthday. That being said said, his team is going to go ahead and be Houndstone, Tyranitar, Sandy Shocks, Salamence, Toxapex, Bronzong, Espeon, Cloyster, Terra Lucario, Doug Trio, and Venomoth. The Terras on that Lucario are going to be Steel and Normal. We are so grateful that he did not choose Terra Fighting because Terra Fighting Special Lucario actually just sticks out a straight up. Like, I don't think that we could have beat that Pokemon. If you are a Smogon player, you're probably looking at his team like, wow, this team is broken. He has Houndstone. And if you're a Draft League player, you're probably looking at this team like, this team isn't really all that but after prepping for it I do definitely think Houndstone is worthy of that first round pick we had it priced at only 12 points as far as how I think his team matches up into my team I do think it is kind of 50 50 I think Chi In Pao specifically destroys his team but other than that I don't think there's a one Pokemon that has a super great matchup on our team on the other side of things though, we do have a lot of things for that Houndstone. So his team is kind of limited in that sense, but Houndstone still does well and it still should come. As far as the first Pokemon that we are bringing, I already let you know how bad Chi and Pao does him dirty. So we are gonna be bringing Chi and Pao in this first slot. We are going to be Terra Dark this week because he doesn't really have a great Dark Resist. And we're gonna simply be Sucker Punch, Crunch, Ice Shard, and Sacred Sword. Sucker Punch, obviously, for potentially the Houndstone and Sand Crunch because the strongest stab that we have. Ice Shard, so we have a secondary form of priority as well as a way to hit that Salamence. And then Sacred Sword is specifically here for Tyranitar, which would wall us indefinitely otherwise. We are 8 HP, 208 attack, adamant, 112 special defense, and 180 speed. We are 180 speed because we will outspeed that Espeon because my literal note in my document, I'm not making this up, I could literally put it on screen, is Dugtrio blows, I'm speed creeping Espeon. I'm sure I actually killed it with Ice Shard, but I think that is hilarious that I put that. So I also have to say, <laughs> during the prep, I spaced out and I thought that he was Terra fighting, not Terra Steel Lucario. So that's why we are a lot of Spadef on this Chi and Pal because we were originally able to live a life form vacuum wave from Terra fighting Lucario. Obviously, it's unnecessary at this point because he is Terra Steel and I got that wrong. So we do have a little bit more special defense than we necessarily need, but it's like the stats would just go into HP anyway and we're not missing out on that much attack. So it's not the biggest deal in the world, but then we went to rest into attack Adamant. Chi and Pao's role here is to just be a breaker and it's a phenomenal breaker at that. It can potentially 2 hit KO some variants of Tox effects after rocks. So Chi and Pao is just so dirty in this matchup. We have to get it in and do damage early. Our next Pokemon is going to be a fully physically defensive Slowbro with the Culvert Berry that is there specifically for Dark Pulse Lucario. Other than that on Lucario, we kind of wall it and it's a little bit scary because I do think Nasty Plot Lucario could come and could be extremely, extremely good into this matchup. We're Future Sight and there's a little bit of combination I'm going to talk about a little bit later with the future site, but essentially we're going to throw a future site up on the Toxapex. We're foul play that way, Salamence does not set up in our face, and then we are body press obviously for that Tyranitar. Mephesto's team is super physically offensive. There's not very many special attackers besides maybe Espeon, maybe Lucario, and maybe Sandy Shocks. That's why we didn't go anything in special defense. Our next Pokemon is also going to be another wall. We are actually bringing Fuzzy Snail the Wochi in. We'll protect Leech Seed, Ruination, and Giga Drain. So protect has multifunctionality here. Protect not only gives us leftovers recovery because we are going to be leftovers as well as potential Elite Seed recovery if we get Elite Seed off, but it also stalled out Sand Turns, which is huge in a matchup like this where I do think
think he can just be smooth rock type Ranatar and try to end the game with Houndstone. Where Ruination throw off some big damage on potentially Toxapex, Bronzong, anything that may want to switch in on us. And of course that is unrecoverable on Bronzong. So that plus Leech Seed is going to be super annoying for him to deal with. And then we have Giga Drain because Cloyster can't Oko us, but he can set up in our face and that's super scary, but a Giga Drain can send him packing or at least put him in range of Chi Yin Pao. As far as our EVs, we are 240 HP, 252 defense bold with four special defense and 12 speed. Quite simply, you're going to commonly see this in draft league. We are going to be speed creeping potential speed creeps on his end. Wo Chien is not slow by any means. It's 70 base speed, but he could outspeed it with something like Tyranitar, which is very realistic. So we put 12 speed in that Wo Chien just in case he goes to outspeed a four speed or an eight speed or a very minimally invested speed Wo Chien. And then we went the rest into HP as well as defense with a rock friendly number of HP. If you are not boots on your Pokemon, you typically want to be an odd number of HP. That way, if you were to take 50% of your health from rocks, you'll actually take 49% and it'll work out a little bit better because Pokemon rounds is down in that sense. Uchiin is here for both the Houndstone as well as the Sandy Shocks. We actually don't need any special defense investment to wall that Sandy Shock. So that's very, very good. But Uchiin is just so bulky that he can take that on pretty easily. Our next Pokemon is going to be our guaranteed lead. We are going to have Cyclozar here. We are going to be Rapid Spin, U-Turn, Knockoff, and Dragon Tail. We are Rapid Spin with Boots on this Pokemon because I do think he can potentially hazard stack ups with things like Cloyster and Bronzong, but I don't think it is necessarily a guarantee. That's why we're also Boots on Xi'an Pao. I also think it's insanely hard for us to get a Rapid Spin off, but we are Rapid Spin, U-Turn, Knockoff, and Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail to prevent setup on things like Cloyster and Salamence, Knockoff, and U-Turn because this is basically Tornado Therian and then Rapid Spin to keep hazards off the field. This is our guaranteed lead and went well in the few mocks that I did. We were able to knock off and U-turn on the Espeon. If we knock off the Espeon turn one, there's no universe that kills us unless it gets a crit. It's also faster than everything barring Scarf, so Cyclozar is a pretty safe lead on that. And except for Dugtrio, because I also didn't speak creep Dugtrio with this Pokemon. We are 80 HP investment, 252 defense, a special defense, and 168 speed jolly. This allows us to outspeed the Espeon as well as live a banded, non-adamant Houndstone play rough. And before before I forget, I want to go ahead and mention that we are building a level 100, which is a little bit different than what Wi-Fi players are used to, but Joey brought it up, why don't we play at 100, and the real answer is because they didn't allow us to back in generation 6, but the answer for now is just because we stuck to our guns, so we decided to switch that up this generation. It doesn't really matter, it makes things do less damage actually over time, and it makes speed creeping a little bit weirder because before, like Mamoswine could outspeed like a base 1 20 or something with Scarf, something like that, and now it absolutely cannot do that. I, I don't know the exact numbers, I made that up, but basically Scarfers are a little bit harder to come by to hit certain speed tiers. Speaking of Choice Scarfers, our next Pokemon is going to be Choice Scarf Goldingo. We have Make It Rain, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, and Thunderbolt. Now this is our premier Lucario check. We are Scarf, so we can outspeed and potentially KO this Pokemon. And that is pretty solely the reason why. We could have easily went Clover, but I feel like Scarf is a little bit better in this matchup. It can also help us with the Venomoth. It can help us with a couple of different things. Uh, outspeed a potential non-boosting Sandy Shocks, non-Scarf Sandy Shocks, as well as outspeed something like Salamence. Make It Rain and Shadow Ball are very obvious because they are stabbed. Shadow Ball is super good in this matchup. Make It Rain is super important because we can actually two-hit KO a potential Quiver Dancing Venomoth. And then we have Focus Blast, obviously, for the Tyranitar, the Lucario, and Thunderbolt for the Gyarados. We are 128 HP, 200 special attack modest, and 180 speed. This allows us to outspeed the Duck Trio as well as Oko, a Terra Lucario with Make It Rain. And then lastly, shout out to J Bear for this set. This comes into play with the Slowbro Future Sight. We are Choice Banded Qua 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 Duck. We are Aqua Step, Aqua Jet, Close Combat, and U Turn. The whole idea is we throw up a Future Sight with Slowbro and then we go Quaquavo, and then the Tox effects has to come in, and basically we claim a KO. Future Sight either kills that Pokemon or Aqua Step from our Quaquavo will kill another Pokemon. We have Aqua Jet to help us with the potential Houndstone, Close Combat, obviously other Stab and U-Turn for momentum. We have 8 HP, 136 Attack, 136 Defense, and 228 Speed. With this, we can outspeed a Cloyster and live a CC from Life Orb non-Terra Lucario, rest into attack adamant and that's going to be the team we have chi and pao is basically going to be the win con here it is going to be what can win in the end game there's not like a, a guaranteed setup win con 
but breaking his Pokemon down, walling things with the likes of Wochian, Slowbro, and not losing to that Lucario are going to be key factors in this game. Like I said, we're going to lead Cyclozar and see where that leads us. We can U-turn, knock off, or Dragon Tail turn one, depending on what he leads. And then we can play accordingly. We can also get Slowbro in, throw some future sites off, get Coquavel in after that, and really force a KO. Let me know what you guys think of this team down below. Be sure to check out the battle tomorrow on Sunday, as well as the potential short that I think I'm going to try to do. And let me know what you guys think of these three ways to consume this new draft league content if you like it if you would change anything if you have any suggestions let me know down below thank you guys so much for watching and for now guys this has been john jr signing off